Hello and welcome back for another Chat with Sarita podcast. I am Sunny and I am here with Sarita Holtzman, president and founder of Sunlight. And today we are going to be talking all about high school transcripts. So Sarita, do you want to jump in and tell us a little bit about, you know, is this something to be intimidated by? What goes into creating your own transcript when you homeschool? And, and we'll just hopefully help some people out with those questions they may have. That's a good word. I think we want to start always by saying this is nothing to fear. Uh, it's something that we can absolutely accomplish. And honestly, I'm kind of grateful that we can even talk about this uh, topic because it feels like just a natural outflowing of all these moms that have taught their kids through all these years. So every mom that gets to high school has to deal with the same thing, and it's totally accomplishable and doable. <laughs> so I, I think we probably want to start with, um, and honestly, I want to I want to just say I'm proud of all of our moms, and we've had many that have successfully graduated their high schoolers and encouraged their kids and helped them get into colleges. So kudos to all of them who've gone before you, and you are able as well. And I guess I want to really start with just defining even what a transcript is, right? It even sounds a little uh, intimidated, but it's basically just an outline of what you've accomplished together with your student, right? It's a it's a progress report. It's a listing of the different courses that you've taken and the things your students have studied. It's a, a little bit, a little bit like a resume that you're basically talking through uh, what kinds of things you've studied and what kinds of things uh, you've accomplished as you've taught your children together. Did you have more on that, Sunny? Yeah, absolutely. I know that took some of the intimidation out for me when I found out it really is just a list, basically, of the courses your students take in with grades that you as the homeschool parent get to determine what the requirements are for the course. I don't know why. I mean, I guess because I graduated from a public high school, I just assumed it was this big formal thing. And, you know, you had to figure out where your standards were coming from and all of this. And as long as you're meeting your state requirements, it really is a lot simpler than I imagined it to be. Um, my oldest is a freshman in high school this year. So we actually started last year kind of practicing, you know, writing down what courses she took, what grades we would have assigned for those so that that way now that she is officially in high school, we're kind of starting off on a good foot. But one of the resources that I looked at when I was doing my own research was Sunlight's High School Transcript ebook. Okay. So we'll make sure to link that. We have the whole process written out for you with templates and different things like that to consider. So if you're listening and you're brand new to this, we will have that information available for you as well. It's a free ebook. And that helped me a lot in figuring out what to do, as well as, you know, hearing from some of our other Sunlight advisors and mentors who have graduated children as well. And they're always available to help. So just like you said, our moms can do it. But if you have questions, Sunlight has a ton of resources to help you figure that out as well. But let's talk a little bit about how to create it. I know I, I touched lightly on that, that I started kind of tracking my daughter's courses last year. But how do you get started? How do you figure out what to put on it? and the information that needs to be there. I want to track, backtrack just a little bit because I actually went and reread our ebook on high school transcripts. I went to our website and clicked in the search button and it came right up as a high school transcript. And I thought, wow, this is a really helpful tool. So if you haven't picked it up yet, uh, please, uh, it's a free resource we offer and it's something basically just to empower you on how to do it. I found it actually really, really helpful. Uh, we actually list all of our high school programs and we give potential scores. And uh, it's just a tool that um, we give you the uh, a, uh, a paper <laughs> that helps you fill it all out. But you're right. We basically just want to list the topics and they, we have a form that allows you to write down uh, the courses that you're studying. And it would be everything from, you know, the history courses you're taking and your math and your uh, science. And, and you can just say we're taking high school biology or high school, uh, U.S. Um, is history. Uh, those actually count as realistic things to put on a transcript. It doesn't have to be anything uh, super, super intimidating or hard, like you had said. It's very good. I think, too, you can do it a couple different ways. You can track by year. So you want to say it's either a 9th, 10th, or 11th, 12th grade program. Uh, sometimes math can be tied to that. and uh, Or you can do it by subject, like I had mentioned. So there's several different ways you can do this. So as you've been doing your um, programming, how, how are you writing them down, Sunny? Yeah, so I actually have both right now because I'm not oh. sure exactly what format I want to use. So a subject transcript is good, like if you have a student that in 
in eighth grade took algebra one physical science classes that could count towards high school. And my daughter did take those along with Sunlight's Level 100, which is a high school program as well, American history. And so I don't know yet if I'm going to count those as her official high school uh, classes or if I'm going to do just what she's taken ninth through 12th. You know, we might look at dual enrollment in the future. We're still trying to figure that out as well. So at this point, I have everything listed by subject and then also by year what we're doing. That way I can kind of make an easy decision when we get to that point and I don't have to start over or figure out what year she took everything. Um, but I know I've been told that you really want to look at what colleges your student is planning to apply to to see kind of what are they looking for in a transcript? Do they want it by year? Do they want it by subject? Is this student going to major in science, for instance, well, then make sure they take a lot of science courses in high school or that they have upper level math if they want to pursue a field uh, that goes along with that. But really what surprised me was just the flexibility that you have when you homeschool that, I mean, I think back to my own high school experience, it was like, if you're going to college, you take these classes. If you're not, you take these classes. And that was about the only option you had where, you know, when you're homeschooling, you really do get to customize it to that student. We talked about the courses that Sunlight offers. Of course, we have many high school courses, but how do you figure out the names maybe of some of the classes? I know church history is one that we often get asked, if you're not applying to a Christian university, do you call it church history? Do you call it something else? Or, you know, language arts, do you give it a long title? Do you just call it English one, English two? You know, so how do you figure out those things? Do you have any ideas for that? Well, I, like I said, on our ebook, we actually list the different programs. So you can use the names that are there. For church history, we can absolutely title it however we want. We, we call it the way we do because it makes it clear and understandable. But for a college, we can say we actually studied uh, kind of a world history program because that's basically how the gospel's gone forth into the world and, and transformed cultures. And so we can title it however we want. And the ebook does help you with some of that. I think too, we also want to list some of our electives as we go through them, because colleges really do want to see that kids are pretty well-rounded and they haven't just studied and done whatever, but they're more of an interesting character. <laughs> One of the examples on the e-site was, oh, you could write down if you did culinary courses. I'm thinking, oh, I wouldn't have thought of that when I did college transcripts, but it makes a student stand out and makes them a little bit more unique, right? So I, I would say, Look at it, look at it fresh and say, what kinds of things have we studied? And don't forget to check out the electives that you've done. For electives, yeah, Sunlight offers some like psychology or college and career planning. We have some actual official courses, but oftentimes um, the advice I've seen is look at what your child's already doing and see mm -hmm. what can be turned into electives from that. So are they already involved in drama and theater and things like that? That's absolutely a fine arts credit. You know, are they, you mentioned culinary, are they into cooking, baking, meal planning, those types of things? You can turn that into a course and make it an elective for them. Of course, foreign language might be something fun to do in a class setting at a co-op or something like that, speech and debate. There's all these different things that don't count as your core classes, that absolutely would work as electives. Um, and I know in our ebook, we talk about, you know, what makes it a class, which I think is sometimes a question with the electives is, oh, my child does this. Do they do enough to assign credit? And so kind of the general rule of thumb is 120 hours of work over the course of that year is one credit and 60 hours is half per credit mm -hmm. or one semester. So that's that's what it says in the ebook. That's also the advice I've heard from HSLDA and other Sunlight Moms who have graduated kids. Um, so that's kind of what you're looking at for that. Let's talk about state requirements a little bit. I know every state has different requirements. You know, how do you figure out do I need 22 credits? Do I need 30 credits? We touch on that in the ebook, but it does vary from state to state. So what are some ideas? For determining that or finding that information? Well, I think you want to just do your little bit of research for your state. And I think I would go to the universities that you're thinking of sending your child to and let and look out for what they're doing. Could be they want two years of high school foreign language. That, that's pretty typical. Or they want, and they'll tell you, we want three years of high school math. We want four years of science. Uh, just And just make sure you're filling in all of those kinds of things. And again, you would use electives just to show inter your students' interests and uh, that they're really a well-rounded student. Uh, I didn't have more than that. Did you, Sunny? 
No, that, that's what I was going to say, too, with the Internet. It makes it so easy, I think, to find that information, both what the colleges are looking for, as well as within your state, if there are certain state requires, requirements, although oftentimes the state public school requirements are not required for your home school. So that can just be a good guideline. You know, if you if your child's planning to apply to college in that state, the kids coming out of school are going to have similar credits to what's required by the school district. So that might just be a good guideline. But again, yeah, that flexibility that we've been talking about where you can really highlight what your student is doing. I love what you said about the things that make them stand apart too. Obviously, if they're applying for scholarships or if they want to take a slightly different path, really let, allowing them to pursue those opportunities and figure out what they're interested in, what makes them unique, all of those things I think are good. We talked about the four main subjects though, and that is something that was very easy with Sunlight, I think, because of the way our high school programs are laid out. The history, English language arts, science and math, you're going to need those probably every year. And at Sunlight, we have mix and match high school programs. Do you want to talk a little bit about the options? Because of course, you can't fit in every high school program in four years with the Sunlight, but some of the choices people might have for those different subjects. Well, I think uh, most, most, I back up to back up a little bit. When you had talked about the requirements, it was surprising to me how few credits you actually had to have between 22 and 25, it feels like that's very doable for all of our students. So, to, but not fret and worry, because if you just do a sunlight program, you're gonna get through this very easily. And like you said, there's more than you could choose. So I would go with what your interests are, right? If you've just done US history in middle school, probably do world history in high school or the 20th century. So I would just try to go with what you've been studying and what you've been learning together and just say, Oh, this looks interesting to me because all of our programs are going to give you enough credits to be able to get into colleges. So, yeah, absolutely. And of course, if you're not familiar with Sunlight Scholarships as well, Sunlight does provide scholarships to high school students who have used Sunlight for a while. So you can find that information on our website as well. And I'll make sure we link that too, so that people who have been longtime Sunlight users can make sure they're applying for those scholarships if they're interested. Uh, let's talk about recording this information though. Let's say you figured out what you're doing. Um, the actual writing the transcript for some people is very intimidating because they want it to look official. So how do you figure that out, how, making it look like a real transcript? Of course, mm -hmm. it's real if you're doing the work, but you may feel like it's not if you're creating it yourself. So what are what should people do in that yeah, situation? We have, a, we have a sample template that looks very professional in our ebook. So I would absolutely use that. Or if you feel like you're really, really creative, just create one on an Excel spreadsheet. And I'm, I, I, I think I want to just reiterate that we don't have to worry about this. I know most... I've never heard of a Sunlight student that did get in, didn't get into the college of their choice. All of my kids did. All of them got scholarship offerings. It's one of those where we don't have to fret and we don't have to fear because homeless homeschoolers are actually desired by most colleges. They want those students that have learned how to study independently. They want to learn how to be thoughtful. They, they recognize that homeschool students just are a little bit different than the normal that's out there. They're uh, going to be people that are pursued and their colleges are glad to get them. So I just want to say, moms, fret not and relax. This is not something we have to worry about or fear. Do your homework, do a little bit of work. And I think you're going to be surprised at how, how grateful you are that your child has done as exceedingly well as they have. So kudos to you moms for really stepping in there and taking the time and investing in the lives of your students. Uh, and when their children graduate, you can stand back and say, well done to both of you. I think you've done really, really well. So that's what I am, son. That encouragement is so good. And to know, yes, that you can do it. I know I've seen within our Sunlight Connections community, that's a great place to go if you need help, by the way, mm -hmm. because there's other parents in there who have already gone through this process successfully. I know. <laughs> now, for me, I always think, I think I'm on the right track, but until I actually do it, it's always helpful to hear from someone else who has successfully done it. But they've mentioned that a lot of times colleges do have, you know, advisors there that are specifically there on the admissions end to kind of help you figure out what you need to submit and all of that. And oftentimes they have people that are very familiar with homeschooled students. Like Sarita said, they're very excited and eager to get homeschooled students. And so they can kind of help you figure out that whole application process better. 
But again, if you have questions about a specific, whether it be a branch of the military or a specific uh, entrance program at a university or something like that, the Sunlight Connections community is fantastic for helping with those questions, as well as our advisors and mentors, because they have been there, done that, and graduated kids. And I mean, I see it all the time in the group, people saying, hey, my child wants to go here. Who's done that? What was the process like? And then, you know, people chime in in the comments. So if you have not reached out within the community, as well. Get in our group on Facebook, get in our Sunlight Connections app, and talk to other Sunlight users, um, because that is very reassuring. But like Serena said, relax, you've got this, you can do it, you've taught them what they know, so that there's no reason you can't celebrate that accomplishment along with them in recording all of the work that you have put in together. So I absolutely agree. Before we close out, Serena, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Every mom worries that she hasn't done enough. So then when you meet a mom and you'd say, well, how did your child do in college? You said, oh, it was, it was so easy for them. I was so worried and I didn't need to be. And you don't need to be either. Thank you so much for being here and for encouraging our parents again today and, and talking through this with us. And we'll have those links available so you can go check out the ebook, check out Sunlight Scholarship Programs and, and get excited about graduating and getting that transcript ready to go. Thank you. Thank you.